Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to our first Advocates Law and Accounting Overview. It's one of our uh, Free Training Friday uh, webinars. I appreciate uh, everyone being here today. Um, this session will be recorded and made available to you later. Um, and in, in the interest of time, we have about half an hour ahead of us today to cover the core functionality, uh, the feature set, workflow automation within Abacus Law and Abacus uh, Accounting. So in the next 20 minutes, I'll do a kind of high-level overview, a walkthrough of the core features, how you may use them in a, in a specific sequence that matches the type of case or even the workflow. That, uh, that your firm um, understands and uh, anticipates a software program being able to, uh, to match. Um, a lot of controls giving you access to a nice organized case file. And from the beginning of it, the case, how you can create it, assemble it, you can manage it through the entire, uh, you know, all the ups and downs and, and changes they might need. Always having access to controls within the uh, system that are specific to you as a user. Um, understanding that roles and responsibilities within the firm can vary. The system can be configured to match your needs overall with an overall view of capturing information for each case in a pertinent way um, with proactive reminders and the expenses and uh, fees and costs and things like that being tracked. So generating an invoice when uh, and as needed becomes uh, a nice kind of intuitive and nicely organized process. So we'll do that for about 20 minutes, and then I'll have a Q&A at the end. And the Q&A in your, in, your, uh, in your webinar, go to webinar control, there's a, there's a section that you can enter questions. And those will go directly to me, and I will uh, take those as they, uh, as they arrive. Um, and during the last 10 minutes, let's say, we'll cover those, and I'll be able to kind of take a deeper dive and answer some specific questions about how this system, one, can be tailored to a firm of any size that practices really any type of law and any other kind of really specific questions you might have, either in reaction to what we see today or just in general that you might have as you assess Abacus as a solution for, uh, for your firm. All right, um, and just to introduce myself, my name is Tomas Suros. I'm the Chief Solutions uh, Architect for Practice Automation here at Abacus. I've been with the, uh, with the company for over 10 years, um, and I'm familiar with not only the Abacus program and accounting, but the, uh, the capabilities it has to be customized for the need of, uh, of specific firms. So with that said, I'll get started. Um, we're now looking on screen at the Abacus Law case management system. Uh, you'll notice we use our, uh, the tagline of practice automation. And what automation really means to me is helping firms automate the administrative steps that are necessary to capture the right information in the right format, and then have that information at your fingertips, and then be able to use that information, whether it's populating a document or creating a report that shows you the specific activities that you, based on your role at the firm, you do, you know, need to perform that day, all the while being able to capture your time while uh, performing those steps. The time capture being important because then that, that information is also stored in the accounting side of Abacus and available to you to generate invoices with the least amount of time and then get those out in a nice professional way that so you can start you know, tracking incoming payments and really manage both the financial components of the firm as well as the day-to-day -day information management and, and time management uh, components. So the first thing I'll touch on in the concept of practice automation is the intake process in Abacus. Intake forms can be designed for any type of law. You'll notice that my list here in this demo environment um, has a lot of different types of law. These are uh, in many ways connected to the practice area legal solutions that Abacus offers. The advantage being a firm can start with Abacus and then select the PALs that match. An example being in my list, I could select an intake form for a litigation case, let's say. I select that intake form and it presents to me um, a series of fields. These fields go into Abacus in a very specific way, right? So the logical order, which fields appear, um, which ones are mandatory, some can be date fields or check boxes or drop downs to ensure kind of consistent data entry. The goal of the intake form when I select it in Abacus is to help you start at the top and enter information in a consistent way, both case information about the matter itself and important dates. So you can start to establish this case's chronology. Um, as you work your way down, I'm now entering inf information about a contact record. This happens to be the client. 
So I can be on the phone, I can be across the desk, I can actually include these in a web page, but the goal being that I capture information in a logical flow, it makes sense to me, I'm asking the right questions, and the information goes in in a consistent way for this case. But it's more than just data entry, because data capture clearly is important, and the, uh, the form, kind of the layout of, the, of this intake, helps me ensure that happens. But in the next layer is both notification and kind of assignment of next steps. The way we do that with the intake form is to build in a calendar rule. And I'll, I'll touch on that in a little bit more detail, but if we're, if we're on the intake form, the concept is during the data entry process, I can automatically or as needed assign both this case to an attorney and staff as well as next steps in the calendar. That becomes an automated or an efficient process. So I can simply select the individuals who will receive you know, the notifications and maybe task assignment. I click done. I continue on with the data capture. What I've done is presented a scenario where those individuals will receive a notification of this brand new case and what they need to do today, tomorrow, and any deadlines that may be projected months or even a year out in advance. That becomes an automated way to, to, uh, to keep track of dates and tasks, assign them to the right individuals, and have that be part of the case assembly process. As I mentioned, what the number of kind of contact records you might uh, add to an intake form, the type of information you capture is a flexible uh, process. There are design tools in the system. But the real goal being you create an intake process that matches your needs. You can apply it consistently. Some other controls, you can save it as a draft to come back or have somebody review before it actually enters your Abacus kind of active database. You can print it, it's kind of a nice summary or an archive. You'll notice there's a timer here. This is your ability to capture time for you know, the, the case assembly process, whether it's for productivity tracking or potentially to create that as a billable activity that would then become a line item in the fee section of the invoice that you generate for this brand new client. And, but the real goal being you select an intake form that matches that type of case, you complete it either with the client or on the phone or as you assemble the information you need, you can track your time and when you're ready you click create records and it's plural there and close because then Abacus gets to work creating the case file, creating the contact records for all those, you know, those necessary parties associating them in a meaningful way so you know who the client is and that they're a plaintiff. You know who opposing counsel and experts and all the different kind of, you know, cast of characters that you may need. The intake helps facilitate that. So I click that button and I know calendar activities are initiated, deadlines are being tracked instantly, and the right information goes into the system in the right format. So that's case assembly in a nutshell. Um, you select the, uh, the intake form that matches and it then populates your Attica system with information specific to that new case. The next thing I'll touch on, I clicked on the calendar button here, is the calendar in Abacus. It's a core function of the program, not only because it helps you view you know, your calendar, a day, a week, or a month, or anyone else's calendar that you might need to view, either because you're helping to manage that or you know, you're working, collaborating with them, looking for meeting times and things like that. But it also breaks out your timed appointments, across all the cases and activities you might be doing today, your deadlines, your reminders are nicely broken out, as well as your tasks. So the Abacus calendar, it does synchronize behind the scenes with Outlook, if that's something that would uh, benefit you, both contacts and calendar it can be synchronized one way or both ways. So you have a lot of different ways of kind of making sure that you're seeing you know, your calendar information in real time. But also, a core differentiator of the calendar in Abacus is the ability to not just add a single event for yourself or someone else, but to add events from a rule. And rules-based calendaring is important in Abacus. I touched on this with the intake, or at least I introduced it, but the rules in Abacus are your ability to create a, a standard set of steps, right, a workflow. You create that process and then you apply it when needed and, and as needed on a case-by-case -case basis. So rules are your ability to add court deadlines and the back and forth of discovery, let's say. So for, you know, for a single case or multiple cases, you can actually track incoming and outgoing discovery based on standardized events, whether they're activities, reminders, you know, tasks, deadlines, what have you. Here, let's take a look at an example of a rule. Um, the rule can have any number of steps within it. The what code gives you context for each of those steps. The interval is the time frame between the steps. So that's a consistent way of knowing when the next step you know, needs to happen, who is reminded, and in what order. 
and also the relative connections are parent-child relationships between those events. I like that because you can have a workflow. Let's say it's this one we're looking at with 18 steps. I know from step one to step 18, there's a time frame. However, as what all often happens, modifications happen, things people need to reschedule and things like that. If a reschedule happens and there's a trigger event, I can go to it, reschedule that trigger event, and because relative connections are established, parent-child relationship, I can reschedule the parent and advocates will automatically reschedule a child event, whether they're reminders beforehand, let's say, or follow-up steps after. That kind of subset of events that are interrelated will automatically be managed in the advocate's calendar because of those relative connections. So this is really a way for you to standardize a sequence of steps and then apply that consistently on calendar. And then individually in the firm, I know what I need to do today. And if I take a step back, I know across all cases everything that's going on. And of course, I can extract reports to show me you know, deadlines that are upcoming or basically kind of heads up reminders for important either tasks that need to happen or you know, appointments that need to be attended, all the different things that a firm needs to manage on a regular basis. So that's rules-based calendaring. That's an important core component of the advocate's calendar. Your rules are just that. They are rules that match, let's say, court you know, uh, activities and deadlines or procedures within your jurisdiction. You can get those from advocates, including updates, as those uh, rules may be updated. And then at any time within the advocates program, you can also create intra-firm rules, right? So your processes and procedures, your best practices that you're familiar with, you have the tools in advocates to kind of create them as rules build them into the calendar, use them when needed, and even design them into your intake forms. The real goal being automate the steps that you know need to happen on a regular and, and kind of specific time frame, and then apply those consistently. You know, there are efficiencies to be gained, and there's that peace of mind knowing that, you know, deadlines won't sneak up on you, and any modifications that need to happen will not only go on calendar, but notifications and updates will be available to everybody who, who's responsible for for performing the steps within a rule and all the activities that might you know, uh, be updated within the rule. So that's rules-based calendaring. It's a core feature of the Advocates Program, and it ties in nicely with the kind of data uh, intake process with the intake form. And of course, I can pull up my organizer and see it in Advocates, make the changes I need, make sure I have real-time access to my calendar information, and then share that with others or with myself via you know, uh, the synchronization tool with Outlook. So the calendar. Next thing I'll take a look at is the matters. And I click on matters button up here. This is a list of all the cases that are being handled by the firm. I have keyword searching within them. I can quickly sort the real goal being to have quick access to any of the files or any of the cases that are open and ongoing. Um, example of a case file I opened up here, Cal Computers. It's a litigation case. It presents to me information. Because it's a litig litigation case, excuse me, and the case type is specific, I can control how the information that's pertinent to this case is displayed on screen. I call that out because on a case-by-case -case basis, there's so many variances between what information is pertinent and what information I need to access. So within the same system, I can move to a case of a very, dis very different type. Um, case code happens to be a, a family law divorce or dissolution of marriage case. You'll notice that which fields are presented on screen and in which order and how they're organized and what quick access I have to them can vary. The real goal of the advocate system is to help a firm manage any type of case and the specifics to those types of cases, both from kind of an interface, what information I see when I pull up that case, to the intake process, how I assemble and collect information, and then how the calendar functions in helping me, in an automated way, manage all the activities and, uh, and deadlines and whatnot for that type of case. So we're kind of building on the concept of starting with the right information moving to an interface that shows you that information, and then in a nice organized and accessible way, having notes and linked names, which are you know the cast of characters pertinent to this type of case available to me. And if I click on events here, the calendar events that, you know, of all the events that we're tracking, you know, in everyone's calendar in the same system, I go to the case file, the events tab shows me just the events for this case. Maybe this is a nice uh, location to point out the bill button here, which is the integrated billing and the dollar sign column, which gives you a visual reference of which types of events specifically have been billed, or maybe which ones have not yet been billed. So the concept is pulling up a case file gives you, in, in, you know, in, a, in a, an efficient way, the ability to check on the status of 
what has been done, what needs to be done next, and looking down the road, you know, what, uh, what uh, maybe, you know, in your own calendar, what I need to do next, including who is billed for these activities, the status, is it done or not done. So this is the case file giving you a status update for this case without needing to track down individuals and ask them, you know, where this is or that is. Instead, the case file becomes that case assembled with all the information that's pertinent to it and updates. You know, what's next, what's happening, who did what when, right, and who billed for it. To that end of kind of an organized and accessible way of capturing your information, the Docs tab gives you document management with keyword searching of the content of the documents themselves. I think that becomes important because hundreds of documents can be collected and organized for a case. Being able to do a keyword search by topic or name or something like that helps you find the document you're looking for. I can drag and drop documents on here. I can use the forms library in Abacus to automatically generate uh, Word, WordPerfect, Excel, and PDF, you know, kind of court forms. By assemble, I mean take information that's captured in Abacus and stored with the case file and insert it into a document template that then can be stored, organized, and accessed via the Docs tab for this case with that build button being handy, a scan button that helps me move towards a paperless environment because I can take incoming paper documents, quickly create a PDF version of it, create an OCR so it's searchable, and add it to the forms library. It's a nice way of kind of consolidating and giving kind of access to all the different uh, documents that you'll capture and store. Also touch on email management, which is becoming more and more of a need for firms. And the recognized need is, well, my inbox in Outlook has my messages. And my colleagues has their messages. We're collaborating in the same cases, but I don't necessarily have access to your email messages. Right? So that's a concern of a lot of our clients. Emails in Abacus can be brought in and stored, consolidated with the case file. And there's that bill button again, right? So integrated billing, where I'm capturing my time, I'm capturing the content of the email, and I can double click on a previously stored uh, message uh, to, to pull up not only the content of it, but viewed its formatting, and then I can reply or forward to it. The advantage being I have access to both the information contained within it, and going forward, I can act on it, right? So it's not just read-only access, but I can reply or forward even if I wasn't the original recipient. And then I'll just quickly show you in Outlook kind of the corresponding uh, toolbar buttons. So via the Outlook add-in, I can take incoming messages and their attachments and very quickly link them to the appropriate case and client in Abacus. That means that my inbox is no longer just my, you know, my information. Instead, the pertinent messages start in my inbox, but then quickly become records stored with the case file and available to anyone in the firm. Okay. Right? So that's the concept. The intake helps you create your matters in a kind of efficient and a specific way to that type of case. The names database is my client list, my you know, uh, insurance adjusters, experts, really any contacts that I want to manage and have access to in the same system. I can associate them with the case via the linked names. And of course, um, the calendar and events on the case file become my way of managing time very quickly and easily in one kind of shared uh, calendar that's specific to me as an individual and all the activities that are then stored and kind of associated with specific cases. Now that said, that's kind of a high-level quick overview of how you capture case information, how you access it, how it's nicely organized, and how the information on your case files is not only accessible to everybody in the firm who needs access to it and has the permissions to do so, but also is available to kind of output. So if you're automating calendar reminders and activities, you're also automating, automating potentially how that, how that information is then used as you assemble and create documents going forward. Okay, so that's kind of the case management side. You'll also notice, and this is a quick shift over the billing and accounting component of Abacus. If I click on billing, I quickly have a new set of controls. Now, the matters list, I'll click here to show you the matters list. This is consistent. We saw this on the case management side of things. So you're not updating the same record in two different systems, which a lot of firms are doing now. Instead, Abacus offers an integrated system where your case files, once created on the case management side of things, are also available to you on the financial aspect, the accounting side, where that client's you know, preference for receiving the invoice and the format, how the, how the firm wants that you know, invoice to appear, what information is contained, um, you know, your timekeeper hierarchy, and even kind of the billing um, uh, mode. Is it hourly, flat fee, or a combination, or on a schedule, or is it contingency? 
the Abacus accounting system is flexible. So on a case-by-case -case basis, the client's needs and how that case, you know, your agreement with the client in billing um, and how the invoice will appear is nicely organized. So you can kind of set up your matters once. You certainly can accept credit card information as payments. A lot of our clients are benefiting from the quick turnaround time. Their accounts receivable aging is, is, uh, is alleviated in many ways or improved, enhanced by being able to kind of accept e-checks, ECH payments, um, and, you know, and, and all major credit cards kind of be an integrated uh, you know, component of the Abacus system. And then in accounting, your billing, your ability to create your pre-bills as a batch process and then validate, verify them, make the changes, add anything that's missing. You then create your actual bills, right? So if you're thinking pre-bills, actual bills, you establish the criteria for a billing run, you then add those matching cases to that run, and then on a client's preference or a case type kind of setting, your invoices are generated in an efficient way. So they're emailed out automatically, they're sent to the printer. Um, in many ways, you can get to the point where staff is very close to the case file, performing the steps they need to do, tracking their time and billing for it. And then on the, uh, the back office component of Abacus, the accounting side is keeping track of it, and making sure that your bills you know, are, uh, are sent out on time and in an efficient process with consistencies uh, in their format the layout and you know the clients know exactly what to expect when they look you know when they receive a bill uh, from you knowing how you know the, uh, the information is presented to them so I can generate those as a batch process then the third step is really posting those bills and once I've posted them that means they're to billing uh, from accounts receivable I know my cash flow I know my aging reports I can very quickly identify clients or invoices that are either overdue or at risk it's a nice way of making sure within one system I have visibility both into the financials of the firm, short term and long term, as well as on the front office side of things, my staff knows how to find the information they need, how to provide client services, how to make the right kind of communications and receive notifications within the program of all the things that need to happen during the life cycle of a case with variances understood and respected and kind of supported where one case and its life cycle, whether long or short, short is managed in the same system where you know cases of multiple types can reside side by side. So uh, trust accounting uh, is another important aspect. If billing is the first component, trust accounting is the second component, where one or more trust accounts can be created and managed within Abacus. You certainly can add your deposits as retainers come in. You can write checks against trust accounts. And you can rest easy knowing that Abacus, as a system, has tools built in to help you reconcile those trust accounts. So making sure money's going the correct way, making sure they're handled in the, in the correct way, and even online banking. So you could take your online banking transaction history for a trust account, bring that down, have Abacus kind of match entries, show you any entries that are orphaned or mismatched, and then the reconciliation process, making sure your trust accounts are accurate to the penny and in balance, becomes an uh, intuitive way with tools built into Abacus to help you do that. And then, of course, trust reports, like many of the other components of Abacus, because it's an integrated system, you have the ability to pull up reports and generate or you know, have access to that information um, in a meaningful way. So your billing, your trust accounting, and your accounts payable, you're able to pay your bills to vendors and, and you know, uh, pass those expenses on to specific cases as needed. Your general ledger truly gives you the accounting aspect, where you don't need an accounting program that was written or that has tools for all businesses. Instead, within Abacus Law, with Abacus Accounting, you have a law firm-specific uh, general ledger-based accounting system. So your ability to reconcile all of your accounts and enter journal entries and you know create reports with journal activity and have access to your balance sheet and your cash flow reports and your profit and loss and income and expense statements. That's exactly how the Abacus Accounting Program gives you those tools in the same system that you would use to track productivity and know, you know where individual timekeepers are versus budget. Right? It gives you all of that you know, kind of granular financial information understanding that you have access to it because Abacus, on the front office side of things, tracks who does what when, and on the back office side, knows who has billed for what, who, you know, which clients have paid, and you have a, a firm understanding of exactly where the firm is from a financial standpoint in seconds. So I can preview a balance sheet and very quickly have that report at my fingertips. Like many other things, these reports can be customized, but the real goal is to make sure that at your fingertips you have the information you need to manage the firm's financials, as well as, on a day-to-day -day basis, what needs to happen on a client and case basis.
Okay, so a few minutes over time here, but I'm going to move to the question section. And I appreciate that there are uh, quite a few questions that have come up, so I'm going to pull that up here. Um, and qu the first question that I'm viewing is about document management. Document management, excuse me. So the question from Stephen is, where are the documents actually stored? It's a great question. <clears throat> the follow-up being, can they be accessed uh, through Windows Explorer? Uh, answer, second answer is yes, absolutely, because what we do in Abacus is we create a symbolic link from the case file, or the client record, let's say, to that electronic file where it resides on your system. And there are controls and kind of configurations within Abacus to help you standardize that, because you do want a centralized location for all your documents. That's, you know, that's helpful for backup purposes and for, um, you know, just for consistency. So the documents are stored where you have kind of stored them in your system, uh, either through Abacus or, you know, or, or placing them in the client folder, let's say, or in, in the case folder and the correspondence subfolder. So they reside there. The electronic file resides where you placed it. The symbolic link from the case file is, gives you quick access to it with that search capability across all of those linked documents. Okay. Um, the next question is, um, does the Abacus software include a contact management similar to Salesforce? That's a good question from Anthony. It does. The names database in Abacus is exactly what you're asking about. This is kind of the, uh, the CRM component where your clients and really any other type of contact can be entered, you have quick access to that information, and as a relational database, one thing I like is, let's say it's an expert witness, or maybe a judge that you, uh, you, know, you appear before regularly, or a client that has multiple cases that you've handled. A client record, one, can be linked to any number of uh, matter records, or a judge in the same vein can be linked to any number of matter records. So it's really not a one-to-one -one match. You have a contact to multiple cases, and a case with multiple contacts attached, that relational aspect, one, helps you organize the information, but it also means should you need to update an email address on a contact record, that update is then available to you regardless of which case you're on that kind of references the contact. So, and then you mentioned kind of Salesforce. Abacus actually does have an integration with Salesforce if you're using that as kind of your lead, you know, or prospect management tool, but also built into it is a full CRM system so that your clients and the ability to maybe reach out via a newsletter or send you know, holiday greetings or something like that. It does have those CRM functions where you're tracking maybe referral, how clients are coming to the firm, um, or getting a profile, either demographics or understanding you know, clients and how you might be able to kind of generate you know, repeat business or, or even kind of referral business. Uh, there are tools built into Abacus that help you track you know, information as needed just for contacts, but then you can also kind of build out that functionality and capture additional data points on a contact by contact uh, basis, which then help you, you know, run reports or generate lists. So you can do some of the other kind of uh, contact management or CRM uh, higher level functions. Good question. Um, and then the follow-up with Anthony, is there an additional fee? And no, there's not an additional fee. The calendar and the contacts and the matters as well as that accounting back end and document and email management. Those are the core components of Abacus and support for the software is all part of you know, the fee that you pay to, you know, to use that software. So it's, it's, there are no hidden fees. I think that's a good question. But we don't break out you know, components of the software. You, you let us know what it is that you need. And as part of the proposal for Abacus, we itemize and break down exactly what's included. And so you know, you have peace of mind knowing, I will have the tools I need within Abacus to, you know, to use it uh, in, in the best way that, uh, that I will to kind of help me manage the firm uh, you know, necessity. OK, so moving down the list. Uh, down the list. There is a question from Tyler. Um, is the software available uh, purchased outright and or is it only kind of a monthly subscription? Good question, Tyler. And we moved away from the widget model where you would actually buy a license to the software. And then, you know, uh, the next time there was an update, you, you, you would be forced to kind of make the decision, well, do I, you know, re-up? Do I buy my license again? That kind of thing. We moved away from that model. And what we offer is a subscription to the software. We think that's a better model. One, it helps you kind of get up and running right away. You know, you know exactly what kind of the monthly, uh, the, uh, the monthly uh, fee will be. And going forward, all updates and support and, you know, the, the components that really make your use of the software, you know, that much uh, more viable, it's included, right? So you know you'll always be using the latest version and you'll have access to enhancements as they come out. So rather than kind of a, and this is maybe getting into the weeds, but it's not a waterfall process where once a year or, you know, regularly we'll roll out an update. Instead, our goal is to make sure that we're constantly supporting, maintaining, and, and enhancing the program 
and as a subscriber, you have access to all those updates. Okay. Um, and then I'll kind of move down the questions. I realize we're getting close to the end here, but I want to uh, touch on. So Debbie had a good question. Can you run reports to show statute of limitations? Um, quick answer to that is yes, Debbie. Um, think of it as a date field, either in the calendar or on the, uh, the matter record itself. That date, let's say it's two years out in the future, is the statute of limitations. Because Abacus knows records of this type have that date field, right? So we know that the SOL date for for our you know our PA cases or whatever case you know you don't you want to you don't want to be time barred. You want to make sure that you have awareness of all cases that are even nearing you know a deadline date. Whether settlement negotiations are ongoing, there are a number of different factors. Are clearly you want to be aware of it. Your sure answer is you can create a, rep create a report that basically shows you cases that have a value in the statute of limitations field. And one of the ways that I've done it is. That is within three months, or simply give me alerts that when we're six months out, and then three months out, and then as we get closer, maybe escalating alerts where maybe there'd be an email that I receive or a pop-up on screen. So, a quick answer is absolutely yes. We have the reports built into Abacus, and it's triggered on either a date that you add to the calendar that's being then tracked as a deadline, or a date that you add to the matter. That is the you know the filing uh, cutoff deadline and awareness of all cases that are nearing it. You know, you can have kind of proactive notifications from the advocate system specific to show you a quick list of those uh, of those cases. Okay. Um, next question question has to do with how I can actually use Abacus and have access to it. Um, and the question is, do you have a cloud uh, version, or you know, do I host Abacus on uh, on site? Um, great question. Um, we do offer the Abacus private cloud. In essence, all of the core features and functionality that we covered today are available to you in your firm's private cloud. So that's certainly worth you know, a, a further conversation into a little bit more depth. But short answer is absolutely. You don't need to you know, buy a brand new server for the firm or replace your existing fervor, for, uh, server excuse me, or you know, rely on you know, an outside IT company to do you know, day to day security and maintenance and updates and things like that. Abacus Private Cloud basically offers you Abacus Law in, in, host, in a hosted environment. The advantage being you don't need a server you know, at the firm anymore. And in fact, it becomes you know, whatever device, whether it's a laptop, a desktop, a Mac, a Windows machine, whatever device you prefer to use, you use to access your private cloud. So I could be sitting you know, uh, at the next desk to someone at the firm. We're both using Abacus Log in the private cloud. Or you know, my colleague there could be traveling in New York or in, you know, in New Orleans or even internationally, and they have the same access to the private cloud environment, the same Abacus Law software, and we can communicate and collaborate in the same way. So in some ways, it virtualizes the concept of a firm's uh, you know, Abacus system and the documents we store and the other programs we may use you know, uh, for their specific strength, but taking that and hosting it into an environment that I have 24-7 access to support through Abacus as the vendor of both, you know, um, of both systems and the security peace of mind knowing the system is managed and maintained for me. The hardware aspect becomes no longer a capital expenditure. It's more of an operating expense, which can help a lot of firms understand that future-proofing your IT and your hardware and even the software you use going with that, you know, that kind of paradigm or that model is a nice way to, one, help you day-to-day. -day. You still have access to, you know, the powerful, <coughs> excuse me, the powerful features of Abacus, but in a hosted environment where you shift the IT burden and the security expertise and you know, a lot of those components that are not at your core competency because you want to be focused on practicing law. Anyways, moving to a hosted environment like Abacus Private Cloud gives you that solution along with the software and one number to call so that you know Abacus is here 24-7 to support the software and to add a user and to increase your storage capacity and to you know, answer any questions that you may have to make sure you're getting the most return on the investment of technology that is really being leveraged to help you manage and provide the best services to your clients. Okay, so that was kind of a, a long answer, but it was a good question. Um, the one other question, maybe I have a, a few minutes left. Um, hold on, um, this is a good question. So. Uh, the question from Tyler, uh, follow-up was, will this software replace Amicus Attorney? Um, it's a good question. So Amicus has its core uh, you know, features and functionality, and Abacus has its core features and functionality. The advantage, I think, from our perspective is we offer both. 
So as a user of the system, if you are looking at both, you, you, you know, are in an advantageous position. So you, you could select the one that makes the most sense for you based on its core features and how you would use it. So does it replace Amicus? Not necessarily. You know, you, in, in essence, you have more uh, opportunity to select um, a flexible solution that matches your needs. So whether, if you are using Amicus, you certainly can continue. Or if you're selecting between the two, you can you know, pick the one that makes the most sense. And same thing. If you look at Abacus and you see core features that make more, make more sense for your firm today or Amicus in the same way, you let us know. Because we offer you know, both programs. They're both available in the, uh, the private cloud kind of hosted environment. It really comes down to uh, the, the flexible needs of a firm and really getting you to the quickest and most efficient way to find a solution that helps you use the technology day to day and have the tools that help you grow the firm or find efficiencies or you know basically do what you need to do in either, either an easier way or you know uh, kind of bring on more uh, more work or more clients and be able to handle it because you have technology the software that we've shown you today that has core functionality where where it reduces the number of steps you need to take in order to get the same results right so you can a lot of that automation goes to reminders and task management and time management and billing and so on it being the start to finish way of managing your entire firm. Okay, well, uh, I kind of talked myself out. I appreciate um, everyone who's attended. Uh, I try to get to as many questions as I can. Some of them I couldn't get to right away, but going forward, we'll have these as kind of a as a regular, you know, kind of Friday appointment. So you know, come back, join us um, as needed. Certainly, reach out and let us know if there are any other questions that you have, specific questions about how you practice law or general questions about Abacus Law or the, you know, the Abacus Private Cloud, never hesitate to, uh, to reach out, contact us. We're here to answer those questions and make sure we give you information to help you make uh, an informed decision whether this is a, uh, you know, um, a, a, a robust solution that will help you out. All right, so I appreciate it, and uh, let's, uh, let's talk soon. Thanks. Take care.